Who's your heart beating for? Who's your heart beating for in this life? So let me ask you this. Let me, let's let's take some steps back because you you are you are most definitely a powerful presence. You have a very powerful kind of persona about you, and that yet yeah, that connection is one thing that I think you probably experience reaching fairly quickly because of how genuine you are in your way of interacting. But has that always been the case? Has that always been a part of your personality? Has that always been a part of your journey? Or if it hasn't, how did you get to that point? Um, I have always, I have always been, uh, <laughs> I've always been a little bit extra uh, from from the time I was a kid. Uh, unfortunately, when I was when I was a kid, uh, that extra was was unwelcome. You mm. know, I, I wasn't real popular. I wasn't real cool. I wasn't uh, whatever. I was second of four kids, um, and I. I felt displaced in my world. Uh, I felt that I couldn't be what I was because what I was wasn't wasn't cool, wasn't appreciated. Um, and, and just to give you the real quick the real quick uh, rundown, um, uh, junior high, I got into drugs and alcohol. Uh, at 24, uh, I was a homeless drug addict on the streets of Los Angeles. Mm. Uh, uh, and would not have survived the year. Uh, I, I would not have survived 1999. I, that, uh, I was in really, really bad shape, uh, physically, emotionally, spiritually, and, and, and would have, would not have survived the year. Wow. Uh, I was, I was, uh, shown a, a bunch of kindness by people who had no reason to show me kindness other than to, you know, uh, to, to show me kindness. Uh, and my, my journey of recovery began uh, in 1999. Um, And really it was those moments. It was that moment. And, and a lot of the subsequent moments where like, where I really got to experience what, like, what, like un, like, Un, unconditional love looked like there was nothing that I could give these people. There was nothing that that I could trade for their kindness, mm-hmm. right? There was there was absolutely nothing. They wanted nothing from me, and uh, and they were and they were just like inexplicably kind. Um, and and the the one thing as soon as I was as soon as I was like almost back on my feet, like like I was you know just steady in myself. The, the one thing they told me is it is your job for the rest of your life, and I still get emotional when I talk about this, is to reach back into the hole that you just came out of. Mm. Like, not you get your feet on the ground and build your foundation and you're okay. No, the moment your knees stop wobbling, your job is to turn around and reach back into the hole. That's your job. And it's the one thing we want from you in return. And what, what that did was tell me that, that what, whatever it is in this world I had to offer, how li- however little, however seemingly insignificant it was, somebody needed it. Somebody needed that small amount of kindness. Somebody needed, you know, the, the, the guy who was now like, like 17 days sober, right? To, to, to reach out and go, I promise that day 17 is better than day six, mm-hmm. you know? And, and in that moment, save a life. Mm-hmm. You know, someone who, was, who just did, didn't know how they were going to make it through the next few days, you know, didn't know and promise them that it gets better. You know, and because the, the guy with 23 years promising, the, you know, you know, day, you know, day 6,480. So yeah, it, disconnected might as well be an alien creature. Right, right. But a, but a guy who's who's still like, like still shaking, <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, was and and so I that was like the first thing I learned about about love and 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 was to was to turn as as soon as you are able 
to to turn resolutely you know i mean and 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 resolutely was was the key like not you know kind of look back and see if anybody needed anything but turn resolutely and reach back into the hole for for anyone you you might be able to serve and it was that that life of service that i i really i found myself in i found i fell in love with i am <clears throat> what is called a prime nurturer. Mm -hmm. I've been, you know, I've been cooking professionally since I was, I was very young, uh, like appallingly young, like, like where are those, where's that kid's parents young? But, uh, and so I am, I am a nurturer. My nature is to nurture Mm -hmm. and always, and this big personality began to serve me in, in, as in my recovery, because I was able, I found I was able to carry a message. And that I found that when I spoke, people listened and, and that I could carry, I could walk into a room and I could carry a powerful message. And first it was in the rooms of recovery, you know, where I, 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 you know, I stood in front of, you know, 12, 24, 50, then hundreds. And, and it's, it's now been thousands of human beings in a single room. And I've been able to carry my, my unique story and my unique message. And so this, this thing that, that that you see, this this persona that you see, is the true and authentic version of me that I was finally given, like not only permission but fully taken off the leash. Because they're like, when you speak, crazy stuff happens. Like people's people's lives shift, and they come to you, and they're 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 ta- they're they're attracted to the message that you're carrying. I, I've heard wonderful, wonderful things, not just your story. I've heard from others as well who were dealing with uh, difficulties of addiction and just the community of caring that goes through that 12-step process. And like you said, the second you are able and your knees are not shaking, it is your duty for the rest of your life to just reach back into that hole and pull the next person out. The, the image that that put in my head was this major contrast. And to, to put some clarity to it, I think about the game that a lot of us played growing up, Barrel of Monkeys. Uh-huh. That's a metaphor that a lot of us use for really downtrodden situations, whether that be poverty, alcoholism, drug abuse, or any kind of addictions, where you find yourself in this community of people who are also suffering. And when you try to take the steps to make yourself better, sometimes you find that same community, even though they care about you, will pull you back in. This seems to be the complete opposite of that, which is in this community, you've built a, a culture of being the ones to be on the outside of that barrel, pulling people out. And I think that's a phenomenal contrast and an incredible Uh, love mission by those who take that on. I'm glad you're one of them. Um, The other thing that you mentioned, which I thought was, (laughs) was fantastic, was that you've always been a little bit extra. And I think a lot of us, um, in one form or another, we grow up and somewhere in that middle school to high school period, we all get this message that however you're extra, however you're special, however you're different, however you're unique, is not appreciated, is not valued, is not something that other people want. And we kind of lose a piece of ourselves in trying to be this thing that other people want. But what we, what a lot of us find, and particularly those that I've talked to in this series, is that it was the things that made them unique, the things that made them extra, to use your words, are also the things that made them the most powerful. They're the things that made their words resonate the most. They're the things that made their love marry the most. What The things that made their mission just kind of take off because there was this extra that they had that no one else could provide. And when they brought their full self into the mission, that's when they saw completely new um, results. And so I'm, I'm exceptionally glad to hear this resonate in your story. So tell me a bit about, you know, so we talk about your, your, you've made it through your recovery. You're now reaching back into the hole. You're pulling other people out. 
And you had also mentioned that you were a professional cook or a chef. So, so tell me a bit about this time. Are you still a chef at this time? Have you gotten back into that work I, or? Yeah, I actually never left. I mean, I was fully, I was fully homeless working in professional kitchens, just drinking every dime, you know, just, oh. just drinking every dime and stuff and every dime up my nose. Like I just, I, I couldn't, what, like I couldn't manage a life, right? I couldn't manage, I had money, you know, I just couldn't manage like making it home to an apartment. I couldn't manage keeping oil or gas in a car. I couldn't manage, you know, making the payments on, on anything. Like mm -hmm. I, like my life was completely unmanageable. Um, the, the one thing that you could absolutely take to the bank about me though, it, it because it's funny, you know, alcoholics and, and, and drug addicts were, they're, they're, uh, they're a funny bunch of squirrels, right? Like, so, so, you know, their the lives are completely falling apart. And yet my, my story was the, the, the things that you could absolutely take to the bank about me at any given moment is that I had a knife that could cut through a train, right? And, <laughs> And that, that I was pissed drunk at any given moment, you know, that, that I was, and, and so I continued on through cooking. Uh, I've worked in, in some very, very high level places, uh, in recovery and, and, you know, I've gotten to work in, in, in Beverly Hills. I've cooked for presidents. I've cooked for celebrities. I've cooked for billionaires. Uh, I've, I've, I've participated in some really, really wonderful things. And that was where, and the kitchens were where the mission pivoted. Uh, because what I learned was that the things that I was doing with drug addicts and alcoholics mm -hmm. worked with uh, uh, executive chefs with anger management problems, worked with uh, bar managers whose marriages were falling apart. They worked with uh, uh, young cooks who were just married and starting out a life and, and maybe they were brand new parents and they were terrified. You know, what I, what I teach and, and some of the things that I do aren't unique. I mean, humans have been doing, doing what I talk about and what I teach for millennia. Mm -hmm. But if you take any random human being and you stop and you add clarity to their life through the process of, of, of daily inquiry into, into what am I doing? You know, mm -hmm. what, are, what, what am I doing intentionally? You add prayer and, and to what doesn't matter. You add meditation, you add journaling, you add like an intentional mindset uh, practices, you watch people's lives take off. Like no, and, and it doesn't matter from, from what starting point, when people began, when people begin instituting specific, you know, personal self-love, a love of other uh, people uh, actions, intentionally into their day-to-day -day lives they find that that you know their their ability to make money increases their ability to to, to stay cool under pressure increases and and professional kitchens are a, a, like they're a powder keg you mm -hmm. know it's a it's a, a a really high pressure environment and i got to be the guy who at one point in my life was just the guy lighting fuses on everything but to to be the guy who could who could literally lower the stress level in a room by bringing my own presence in by bringing my own calm in and whenever when the pressure level gets high i'm taking deep breaths and going it's just fine guys here's the deal like here's the real you know and bring some clarity into a situation and drop that level of pressure drop that level of stress people's cortisol levels go back down they're now operating from their they're remembering how much they love to cook and they're remembering how much they love this game, this, this sort of adversarial uh, 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 relationship with, with the people ordering and the, the amount of time and the amount of space. And it's this, you know, great game of, of, of time and space Tetris. Yeah.